I was born into the tribe of Dan during the time when the Philistines ruled over Israel with an oppressive hand. Our people groaned under their pagan idolatry and cruelty. But before I drew my first breath, an angel of the Lord appeared to my mother with an amazing proclamation. My mother's name was Hannah, and she had been barren for many years. One day, as she rested under a terebinth tree near our home, a magnificent being stood before her. At first she was terrified, but the angel's voice was gentle as he said, You are sterile and childless, but you will become pregnant and give birth to a son. His hair must never be cut, for he will be dedicated to God as a Nazirite from birth. He will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. My mother fell face down on the ground, overwhelmed by this divine encounter. When she looked up, the angel had vanished. She hurried home to my father, Manoah, and recounted what had transpired under the terebinth tree. Scarcely believing such an astonishing promise, he prayed for the messenger to return and provide further instructions. The Lord was gracious and the angel appeared once more while they were out in the field. This time I moved within my mother's womb and she quickly summoned my father. As Manoah approached the stranger, he asked if he was the same man who had spoken to his wife. I am, the angel replied. Wanting to know how to raise this special child, my father inquired, what must be done for the boy after he is born? What is to govern his life? The angel reiterated his instructions to my mother. The woman must be careful to do everything I've told her. She must not drink wine or any other alcoholic drink. She must not eat anything ritually unclean. The boy will be dedicated to God as a Nazirite from birth until the day of his death. Still doubting, my father asked for the identity of this messenger to prepare a sacrifice. But the angel replied, Why do you ask my name? It is a name of wonder. Manoah took a young goat and a grain offering and sacrificed them on a rock to the Lord. As the flames leaped up from the rock, the angel ascended in the fire itself. My parents fell face down on the ground suddenly, realizing it had been the Lord's angel. From that point, my mother awaited my birth with a mixture of joy and trepidation. What sort of child would this be marked for a special destiny? Before even leaving the womb, when I finally entered the world, it was obvious I was no ordinary boy. The Lord's blessing was upon me and I grew strong in body and spirit. As a young man, I already displayed immense physical power, a sign of my divine calling. My parents must have known my first feat of might foreshadow greater things to come. We were traveling west through the fertile valley of Sorek, where vineyards covered the slopes. Suddenly a young lion came roaring at me. The spirit of the Lord came upon me with explosive force, filling my body with supernatural strength. As the lion sprang toward me with fangs bared, I seized its jaws with my bare hands and tore the beast apart as if it were a tender young goat. My parents looked on in amazement as the carcass lay lifeless before me. I continued on toward the Philistine city of Timna. Though the Philistines were our rulers and oppressors, a young Philistine woman there caught my eye, and I determined to take her as my wife. Such an association with pagans, no doubt, grieved my parents who had faithfully raised me as a Nazirite devoted to God, but my mind was made up. When I arrived in Timna, the festive air of an approaching wedding filled the streets. During the celebration, I devised a riddle to challenge the young Philistine men. Out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the strong came something sweet. If they could not solve it within the week-long feast, they would owe me 30 linen wraps and 30 changes of clothing. The men struggled fruitlessly for days to unravel my riddle's meaning. Finally, they turned to treachery and threatened my bride-to-be until she wept and pleaded with me for the answer. In a moment of weakness, I revealed the riddle's origin, how I had encountered a dead lion and discovered a swarm of bees making honey within its carcass. When the Philistine men arrogantly proclaimed the correct answer, I knew my wife had betrayed me. In a burst of anger, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me and I went down to Ashkelon and killed thirty of their men. I stripped them of their garments to pay the forfeiture owed for failing to solve the riddle themselves. My smoldering rage did not end there. Returning to my wife's home, I found her father had given her away to another man during my absence. This injustice stoked the flames of my fury into an unquenchable blaze. Flint had struck steel, igniting my long-simmering resentment of our Philistine oppressors. I made my way through the fields and vineyards surrounding Philistine lands. 
Catching 300 foxes, I tied them tail to tail in pairs and bound a torch between each pair of tails. Then I released these blazing foxes into the Philistines' unharvested fields and vineyards, utterly destroying their crops and orchards with fire. When the Philistines demanded to know who had wrought this destruction, they learned it was in retaliation for my wife's betrayal. They responded, by seizing her and her father and burning them alive, though his actions were abhorrent, my anger only intensified at this atrocity committed against my own flesh and blood. The spirit fell upon me again, empowering me to lash out mercilessly against our oppressors. Seizing the fresh jawbone of a donkey, I descended upon the Philistines with a terrible vengeance. I slaughtered them by the hundreds with that crude weapon, leaving a trail of carnage in the valley called Lehi. When I finally paused from the killing, I was parched and faint, my mouth dry as the desert. Despairing of thirst, I cried out to the Lord, You have given your servant this great victory. Must I now die of thirst? God answered my plea by miraculously splitting open a hollow place. In the ground and refreshing water poured forth. I drank deeply revived by the Lord's provision as I had been strengthened to decimate our enemies. In remembrance of that divine deliverance, I called the place the Blessed One's Jawbone Spring. For the next 20 years I led the Israelites as we resisted Philistine oppression, though I made many mistakes and yielded to various flaws. During this time as judge over our people, God accomplished great victories through my leadership. Looking back I can see how the Lord was testing me, disciplining me, to remain faithful through times of both triumph and adversity. I grew overconfident in my strength, letting my guard down in ways that would ultimately undo me. It happened when I foolishly allowed myself to become entangled with a Philistine, woman of loose morals in the pagan city of Gaza. My time with the harlot was meant to be brief, but became a snare, for the Philistines learned I was within their borders. They stationed men at the city gate lying in wait to ambush me when I would depart at dawn. When midnight came I awoke and looked upon the heavily fortified gates of Gaza. The city's leadership no doubt thought themselves quite clever, believing they had me trapped within their walls. Little did they realize. The one who watched over me never slumbers nor sleeps. Utterly humiliating my would-be captors, I reached out and grasped the city. Gates tearing them up, posts and all. Then, with the heavy barricades upon my shoulders, I simply carried the gates clear to the top of a hill facing toward Hebron. My show of strength and defiance for any Philistines who thought to challenge me. Prideful incidents like this reveal how I let my God-given power go to my head, at times. But still greater was the transgression of yielding to lust, which ultimately brought about my downfall. Her name was Delilah, a Philistine temptress whose beauty belied her wicked schemes. When I first met her in the Valley of Sorek, I was powerless before her feminine charms. Perhaps that is why in my blindness I failed to heed the warnings of her true character. Delilah turned out to have been bribed by the Philistine leaders who feared me greatly. They offered her an immense sum of money if she could pry from me the secret of my incredible strength, thereby enabling them to subdue me. At first I playfully deceived her, misleading her about the source of my power, but she persisted employing every womanly while until I could no longer resist her seductive pleas. Finally, in a moment of severe compromise, I confessed that my supernatural might originated from my lifelong Nazarite vow. As long as my hair remained uncut, I told her I would retain the incredible strength that God had bestowed upon me from the womb. Delilah must have sensed my sincerity, for she promptly lulled me to sleep with further wiles. As I lay unconscious with my head upon her knees, she summoned a Philistine to shave off my hair, leaving me shorn bare. I awoke to find my privilege had been forfeited, the power now gone as quickly as my shorn locks. The Philistine men fell upon me easily, overpowering someone who had seemed invincible just hours before. Their cruelty knew no bounds as they gouged out my eyes, binding me in bronze shackles and dragging me to their pagan temple in Gaza as a trophy of their victory. There I was imprisoned, forced to grind grain for my captors like a miserable beast of burden. How the mighty had fallen, I, the one called from birth to rescue Israel from the Philistines, was now blinded and bound by the very people I had been sent to defeat. The depth of my disgrace overwhelmed me. I could hear the 
taunts and jeers of the Philistines around me as they paraded their prize captive. The once mighty Samson before any who would look upon my humiliation. Surely the Lord had abandoned me for my spiritual adultery and pride. What future could I possibly have, robbed of sight and strength? In utter despondency, I cried out to the God of my fathers for sheer mercy, confessing my unfaithfulness while begging for an opportunity to somehow glorify Him despite my failings. My repentant heart must have moved the Lord, for in the months that followed, my hair began to grow back as it had before my betrayal of the Nazirite vow. With this small sign of restoration, a fragile sense of hope flickered to life. Could it be the Spirit would return to me once more? That glimmer of possibility shone a little brighter when the Philistine leaders decided to make great sport of their fallen foe by putting me on display. They gathered at their pagan temple in Gaza, filling the streets and courtyards. With raucous feasting and drinking in honor of their fish god Dagon, at some point during the revelry someone demanded that Samson be summoned to entertain the crowds with feats of strength. Little did my captors know the true source of my might had never abandoned me. When I arrived at the temple, a servant boy led me by the hand toward the Colosseum-like structure where the rowdy crowds jeered and shook their fists at me. Guide me so I can put my hands on the pillars supporting the building, I muttered to the lad. Ever obedient, he did as I asked, positioning me between the two central pillars, holding up the entire edifice as I leaned against them, feeling their weight. Upon my shoulders, I bowed my head one final time, Sovereign Lord. I pleaded, please strengthen me just one more time. A deep, familiar rumbling shook my very bones as the Spirit of the Lord arrived in power. When I felt the anointing fully upon me once again, I cried out in a thunderous voice, let me die with the Philistines. Using every ounce of my revived strength, I pushed against those pillars with all my might until they began to groan and crack under the burden. Then, in an explosive release of sheer guttural force, I thrust them apart, toppling the entire temple upon the mass of humanity crammed within its walls. Thousands of Philistine soldiers, leaders and celebrants perished that day. I more than the combined total I had killed throughout my entire life. But finally, completely spent in accomplishing this ultimate act of deliverance for my people, I passed from this life amid that crushing hailstorm of masonry debris. It was a bittersweet ending after so much failure and redemption. I know why. Story brought both honor and dishonor to the name of the true God. Yet by his mercy and faithfulness, he ultimately used even my downfall to deal. A crushing blow against the oppression and pagan idolatry of the Philistines who subjugated my people. When all was over, my brothers and remaining family members retrieved my dust-laden body from the rubble. They bore it back for a hero's burial, laid to rest alongside my father Manoah and the rest of his household. My life stood as a testament to God's strength perfected in human weakness, an example of how he works through even the most flawed instrument to accomplish his redemptive purposes, a tale filled with triumph and tragedy, courage and compromise, power and paradox. Ultimately, the legacy I left was one of hope and deliverance granted.